All right, guys. Here we go. This is called The Harsh Reality of TikTok Fame by Andrew uh, Kingler. I don't know why I do this to myself. Um, it seems interesting. I'm wondering what that reality is. I know the reality is they don't pay well. I know the reality is that they over censor. I know the reality is that they're not a very good platform. And I know the reality is, is that, uh, in my opinion, at least YouTube is doing a good job, uh, to an extent displacing it, um, uh, in a way that's at the very least treats their creators better because I'm telling you in what was it? January. That's not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, because soon, that's a better way to say it, they're going to be implementing like 45% revenue for YouTube shorts, which is cool, man. It's, it's, that's the thing. Is it like when, when your creators get paid well, or at least fairly, and I think that 40, like I have 50, 50% is pretty fair. Uh, they, they make better content. They have less stress. They're able to focus. They're able to not worry as about views as much. I know it sounds so weird, but like when you, and YouTube is good at that, making it so that you don't have to really, you know, you can, you can get not a lot of views and still have a pretty solid living. So let's get this video going. This video is brought to you by Glasses USA, but we'll touch more Whoa. on that later. Hi folks. Have you ever seen? No, nah, never touch my glasses. Never touch my glasses. I need to get new glasses actually, because my glasses are very old. These glasses are like four years old. Seen this video? That was the move that made LeBron cry. Well, I know that guy. Is this that guy? Wow. I've seen that before. In case you didn't know, that oblong-shaped video game character is me. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Because today we're going to be covering a topic that I've wanted to cover ever since starting YouTube. TikTok. To be entirely frank, I've experienced a lot of hesitation in preparing this video. After all, every bit of success that I've had on the internet up to this point is because of TikTok. So in honestly, true. Same here, man. The the weird thing about TikTok is is that like it's a good platform to advertise to pull to you, you to other platforms. Like it was, it, it helped me uh, be able to like build a career very quickly too. I mean, I I blew up faster than like I think anybody ever deserves. Uh, you know, now we're going through our, our slow rebuild, <laughs> but I think that the slow rebuild is more deserved than the fucking, you know, the, uh, speedy original build. Anyway, my point is, is that, but it's weird because like, it's cool cause you could blow up quickly, but then at the same time, they don't really give you, you know, much about money for your, you know, bang for your buck, uh, at the same time. And it feels like they almost try to punish people for pulling people to other platforms, which I understand that they want to keep people on that platform, but you know, it's there's not a whole lot of sustainability, especially since you can lose your account in like a second. It's crazy. Uh, and then you get like permanently, you know, f screwed over for it in different ways. I actually posted a, a, a short on YouTube that um, I posted a short on YouTube that got pulled down because it was a little intense. It was it was me. It was a, it was a compilation of uh, yay saying saying that Hitler was based and stuff uh, and I understand why they took it down but they didn't like penalize me they're like we're taking this down it's inappropriate but they didn't slam my account with like this horrible thing that would screw me over they're typically a little looser about some of the content you can be a little edgier as long as you're not like disrespectful so I appreciate the platform sense i'll always have a soft spot for it but the more that i've thought about it i've come to the realization that wait <laughs> no one actually cares so now that that's out of the way i'm going to do what i do best hate the shortcomings of tiktok are nothing new in fact they manage to surprise me every week with an update that is so horribly designed that it makes me feel like i'm in hospice care trying to use an <laughs> iphone for the first time okay but seriously what am i looking at right now Wh what what it goes without saying that if you want to find some what was it trying to use an iphone for the first time <laughs> okay but seriously what am i looking at right now Wh what what it goes oh yeah it's terrible some of their new designs are like just annoying to deal with like there's the mode where you can everybody can see that you've been online for the day. It's like so cringe. Without saying that if you want to find something on TikTok, well, you can. One second you'll be watching a dog eating a piece of pizza, and then immediately scroll to a video of an old man trying to fix a TV by beating it with a stick. Now at this point you're probably thinking, well, yeah, it's not all that bad. Well, the best content. No, you're wrong. I, I just told you it was. That's honestly pretty messed up. Because of how easy it is to see and be seen on the internet these days, everyone has decided to become the most abhorrent version of themselves, and by that I mean the influencer era. I know a lot of videos have been made on TikTok before that talk about the app itself and the user experience, but today I'm going to talk about why you should never become a TikTok creator. <laughs> Let me take you back to early 2020, playing Animal Crossing, getting inappropriately baked in the middle of the day, and definitely there was- Well, 2020 was wild, that's when I blew up. <laughs> major happening in the world at that point at all. I started posting on TikTok in early April of 2020 after seeing someone from my college post a viral video that was impressively unfunny. It was actually so unfunny that it prompted me to test the system and make my very own unfunny video. If yeah, man. I mean, that's the thing is that there was people were all home. That's how TikTok became like a fucking outrage machine. Everybody was home. Everybody was on TikTok. Everybody was crying. Um, 
and people wanted to watch stuff, blah, 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 blah. So, and then there's a lot of people just looking for entertainment, even if it was stupid. And that's why like your, your, your B tier, uh, content creators were able to flourish. Like myself, I'm not a fucking A tier creator. You know, I'm not like a Joe Bartolosi of the world. I'm not a fucking Mr. Beast of the world. I'm Pop Papa Gut. I'm a secondary creator and I'm fine with that. I know my fucking place and, and there's a lot of people who enjoy me, so I'm fine with it. Um, but then it also allowed like your C and D tier creators and God bless them, but they weren't able to like st stay, f you know, afloat after 2020 was over and people weren't watching as much and, and whatnot. So. This TikTok goes viral. I will order a spicy Asiago ranch chicken club at Wendy's. And it worked. By the way, that sandwich is garbage. Sandwich? Do not try it. But if that was so okay. easy, then who was to say that I couldn't do it more? So I did it. In fact, I spent the next few months posting three to four times daily. I was actually so dedicated to- <laughs> True, dude. I used to- I would post upwards of 20 times a day. I would just sh a fucking shit post. That's how I've always found success is just excessive shit posting. Um, and it was, and I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm not, I'm proud of it. I don't care. Posting that I got fired from my job for making a TikTok about getting fired from my job. Never see my fucking face here ever again. I just got fired from my job. And then when I actually got uh -huh. fired from my job, I made a TikTok showing off my termination letter. Why the fuck was I so confident? I, I was literally working at a wine store. But in August of 2020, Damn. everything changed. <laughs> oh, I get it. I don't look like the average athlete, but I am an absolute fucking unit on the basketball court. That was the move that made LeBron cry. Yep. Okay. The attention that video got was insane. It ended up getting like 10 million views and I got like 250,000 followers in like two. You know what the worst thing about getting banned was is that none of, well, it's almost the best thing too because I'm not proud of a lot of my old content, but I am very proud of this one video. I started this trend. I don't know if you, people may do it a little bit here and there. I started a trend of going, oh, this person got this many views for this thing. Well, I'm going to do it better. But the way that I did the trend was twerking. So I found James Charles and he would twerk. And so I was like, oh, 15 million views. I could do better than that. And then I twerked out. I out twerked to James Charles uh, to the point where he actually got so upset that he could, he no longer trusted adults anymore. And he just started, he started talking to kids. Um, all jokes aside, I did actually out twerk this guy. And to a point where he deleted his twerking video. Like, I'm not even kidding. I got 35 million views on my twerk video on that. That was funny. And then I think I out twerked Bella Porch. I got about 15 million views on that one. That was my best content was out twerking. And the reality is, is that I'm, I can twerk better than everybody. I'm better than all of you at twerking. You're like, no, you're not popular. I am. I am. I'm, it's an objective fact too. We're not even having a conversation. There's no, there, 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 there's no, um, there's no debate here. This isn't like something that's up for a conversation piece. I'm good at twerking. I'm better than you. I can throw it back. Um, and so that's wh where a lot of my big viral views came from was twerking the, you know, schlanging. I proof maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe I'll make a video twerking, but that's how I did it, baby. Two days. It was actually at this point where I started to consider content. If creating. I can find the old James Charles video, I will. I will twerk. I will show it to you guys. Okay. As a job or a career. Um. Why would I do that? Little did I know, though, that TikTok was about to do something to that account that I have never seen Bad. to this day happen to anyone ever. Immediately after posting the LeBron video, TikTok took away my ability to go live, uh, as well as my ability to reach the for you page with no communication whatsoever. Dude, it's You've never seen that before. <laughs> My brother in Christ, that happens all the time, dog. I don't know what you're talking about. They fuck. There's, there's a. I remember I see like a couple of people. They were usually girls, and they were like, "I'm 22," but they pulled my 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 TikTok down because they think that I'm 16 or like I'm not old enough. It's like what the fuck? They do some crazy wild shit to people. Uh, they do not care at all, my brother. It's okay, dude. No, you got this. You're just shadow ban, man. You'll bounce back any shot Shut up, dude. Shut up. A shadow ban blocks a user from a social media site or online forum without their knowledge, typically by making their posts and comments. It's possible that you shout it. It's also possible, brother, that like your content wasn't hitting for a while and like maybe that was it. I mean, like, I'm not saying that that's exactly what it was, but you know, you can only do so much. Am I right? It's no longer visible to other users. Personally, I'm not a fan of using the phrase shadow ban when talking about TikTok, um, mainly because it doesn't actually exist on the platform. We'll talk about that more later, but I truly believe that that was not what was happening to me here. What you're seeing now is a series of screenshots over a course of about four months where not a single one of my videos was reaching the For You page. If, as TikTok says, every- uh, That makes sense, though. Why is my not my my buttons aren't working? That makes a little bit of sense though, because what you need to understand is that like when you get to a certain point, view wise, like of course your 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 content isn't going to necessarily make it to the for you page, um, 
Because that's not saying that it didn't make it to the for you page. That's saying that it, it that it didn't reach. Why is my button not working? That's saying that it didn't reach outside of your following base. So if you have like a million followers and then you get a video with a hundred thousand views, I mean, like I don't. It's not unreasonable to think that um, all those people follow you. You know what I mean? For a course of about four months where not a single one of my videos was reaching the For You page. If, as TikTok says, every public video uploaded to the platform has the chance to be seen by at least one random person, then who the hell over at TikTok was mad at me? Okay, oh, community yeah. guidelines team, welcome, welcome. We got a couple videos to look at today, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, first one we have here is of an ass shaking competition. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we yeah, need to see that, that one. Right. Okay, now we've got this one of a kid talking about beating LeBron James in a basketball game. What the fuck? After becoming overwhelmed with anxiety and confusion, I decided it was finally time to stop being a little dumb baby and make a new account, Mud Consumer. And from there, everything seemed smooth sailing. I gained a massive following on the app and I was getting more attention than I ever expected. And that's yeah, I mean, that's fair because I actually, uh, I thought I thought I had an account shadow banned, so I got rid of it and then I made a new one that was the Papa Gut account. And then, uh, you know, the rest is history. But um, yeah, I wonder how much is shadow banning. You know, it, it's so unfortunate because if TikTok was just like a little, I understand like having... I understand that TikTok needs to have a level of censorship, but I feel like their censorship is like unreasonable to a point where it, they care too much about reports from people, and it makes it very difficult for any creator to exist. Not even just myself. Like nowadays, I could put something up that's like barely sensitive. Like it doesn't matter what it is, and people could like will mass report it because like there are people who know who I am and they don't like me, or they just look at me and think I'm a fat fucking racist conservative because I look like a fat fucking racist conservative, and it it hurts your ability to like really do anything sometimes, you know. Um, it's kind of fucked and um uh, it's difficult to grow and i feel like what a lot of times it's just like oh what do people think about your content and then they will pull it down and it kind of removes your ability to create some content like i'd love to have a clips channel but i feel like anything that i put up will be taken down and i'll get like demonetized or i'll get like pulled off like this or that or the other thing and it makes it like impossible to, to build or grow on the platform that's all great that's awesome but after two and a half years of creating uh why wasn't anything happening? What does that mean? The experience of creation on TikTok is much like spending four years at the most mediocre college known to man. It's like if your assignments represented videos and your professors represented TikTok in its general community. You spend hours of mental and emotional effort writing 15 page essays day in and day out just for your professor to read one paragraph and tell you you're using passive voice. Or in other words, creating for a following of over a million people and only having a couple thousand people see your videos. I've watched countless people struggle with this issue and the Wait, classic excuse- Honestly, your content might just stink, you know? Especially again, especially now, it's it's a, it was a hard transition for a lot of people to to leave um, to basically leave twenty twenty, and when the views started going down, man, I don't think everybody was prepped for it. I don't think everybody was ready to um, understand that they were just not going to get the same views anymore. And it was it was it was a fast crash. People went back to work and bada bing, bada boom, your TikTok account is in doom that makes sense i don't know is doom duh, that would i don't know doesn't matter you get my point um it was rough man excuses that tiktok is shadow banning them preventing their audience <laughs> from seeing their youtube video. did notify you that i was going live yes it seems like that's something that people are doing i might make a discord eventually I didn't believe in shadow banning until it happened to me. Right off the bat, this is what it looks like. A sudden and dramatic decrease in traffic that plateaus at the bottom. So before familiar. the shadow ban, this is the analytics for one of my videos. This is what they look like now, where all of the traffic is coming from following. TikTok was in the news recently, so I'm guessing the algorithm has just changed. Now, every time I see videos like this, they kind of just feel like a long-winded way of complaining about views rather than actually showing any type of proof of a ban. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Shadow banning on TikTok doesn't exist. And well, now you're probably thinking, this is bullshit. I post low-quality anime clips on my page every day, and I built a community. Growth on TikTok Girl. works in one major way that people seem very opposed to accepting, and that is shares. And it makes sense. A defining factor of what we consider to be a successful video is an actual desire to watch the video. Therefore, if someone enjoys a video and thinks it needs to be seen by more people, they will send it to a friend, or an uncle, or a pastor. Here's an example from my personal library. This is my- I don't think it's all shares, but I mean, part of it, of course, is going to be shares, but... Oh, this guy- See, these fucking idiots don't know how to play the game, dude. I swear to God, I'm gonna- I'm gonna fucking shit my pants. Chuck Fuck video, arguably one of my most popular. We can see that it has around 10 and a half million views and 98,000 shares. God, I'm, I'm so talented. So the success of that video is a dead giveaway. Now, this is a clip of one of my YouTube videos that I recently uploaded, and you'll notice that it has 88,000 views and only 27 shares. Granted, we're looking at a pretty large scale in terms of numbers here, but those numbers, they don't lie, baby. So what am I trying to say here? You're just making bad content. Yeah, I don't want to watch your low quality anime clips. Huh. 
Unless you're planning on showing me some low quality anime tips. While well, it's completely Bro. people's faults that they're making bad <laughs> videos, it's also oh, easy fuck. to understand why people are getting confused over this. Let's say you're a new creator and you somehow manage to get a million views on TikTok. Congrats! Well, then you're like, oh yeah, let's post another. You know something I, I feel I've noticed is that I feel like newer accounts get more views on like their first one or two videos. Does that make sense? It's weird. Like I'll post, like I'll make a new account, I'll post a video, and that's like, oh, a million banger. But then after that, uh, like it kind of normalizes. It's probably, I mean, honestly, if I was, if I was a, uh, if I was a skeptical man, I would say they're doing that on purpose to make people get like addicted to likes so that they're constantly like, I need to get another like on this video. Um, but it's a smart business tactic to get the to get the creator to be fucking addicted to to the grind, dude. Okay, all right. Okay, so it's got five views. This introduces a concept that I think was my most painful realization as a TikTok creator, which is that in most cases, your TikTok following is not a fan-based audience. This may come as a no, surprise to some people, but it actually shouldn't because TikTok puts it right in our faces. I'm now going to read you a well, quote. Well, no, that's the thing is like TikTok is so weird. Like I feel like it doesn't focus. So like YouTube has like a mixture of focusing between what they think that people will enjoy plus like with the factor of like following somebody. But I feel like on TikTok, it is almost exclusively like uh Oh, I don't know if they increases the chance that people are going to see your video. I don't know. It's weird. And it makes sense. They're more focused on getting people who will want to engage with the content more than people who like follow for it. But they've never implemented a decent system to like forcibly show you a particular person's content, even if it doesn't necessarily perfectly align with your algorithm. Whereas like YouTube does, you can actively go and you could like actively subscribe to somebody. Um, so I feel like it's a little different in that respect. But. But because it is so disgustingly sugarcoated, I've taken it upon myself to provide the subtext because I love you. To many people, having your content appear on people's For You page is the holy grail of TikTok success. It means that TikTok recognizes the quality of your content, wants to take advantage of you, over all the other videos that people upload each day. It provides an excellent way for you to gain recognition, followers, and have your videos viewed by a wider audience. Maybe. It also helps you move further along the path of becoming a TikTok influencer. And that last part is just a cringy way of doing something I like to call lying. In simpler terms, and pay attention now, gaining followers on TikTok simply gives you a better chance of being seen on the automated For You page. It does not guarantee that you will continue to get more and more views on your videos. Additionally, oh, yeah, due to the massive sense. oversaturation of users on the app, there's a chance that someone will see one of your videos, follow you, and then never see you again. And guys, I made yeah, that quote myself. Sure. Praise me, praise me. It's a sad truth, and unfortunately, it's because there is so much variety on the app that they decided, hey, you know what? Let's just uh, let's cram it all onto two pages. Thanks, guys. Thanks for making a social media app that gives me no choice as to what I watch. Thanks for literally ruining social media. This is most of the reason that we see new creators blow up and fall off within a span of like three months. Well, that and um, that true, and that and like there are people that do like some crazy viral shit, but like they're not people that are necessarily content creators. It's it's cool but you know not everybody is necessarily interesting you know the weirdest stuff is when somebody will blow up for something and then they'll start doing like fan, like fan q a's or some weird cringe shit instead of like making content more they're like oh my god guys the worst is when somebody has a viral video and especially if it's some bullshit ass like sensationalized story from like their real life and they're like guys i didn't think this was gonna blow up so fucking crazy this is insane guys holy shit and then they'll start explaining to you their whole life story before like explaining whatever the story time is supposed to be it'd be guys come on grow up you know what i mean grow up that and getting canceled hey, speaking of remember that gemini guy he got kicked off the face of the internet for and still tried to come back to the worst social media platform on the planet. What a bozo. We should put him. Yeah, that, that Gemini guy. Yeah, he, you know, when he came back, he at 21, he tried to, he was trying to talk to his 14 year old girl. You know, the, I, I talked about it on my archives channel. Like the dude got, the dude did some fucked up shit. And then he tried to come back and talk to a 14 year old girl. She got screenshots and everything. <laughs> how fucking, how brazen, how brazen, how fucking bold. I'm in a fully packed fridge for 48 hours and see what happens. Oh, by the way, have you guys noticed something about what I'm wearing on my face in this day and age? Oh, really? You haven't noticed? Well, I'll tell you something. It's Glasses USA, oh, baby! Shit. Folks, it's that time of year again, the holiday season, which means we're all looking for something to set our sights on. Something we want really badly. Well, well, I got a great deal for you. Glasses USA is one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the U.S., offering over 10,000 prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses. You know what's cool? I, I don't remember what it was, but I saw this thing on TikTok. I, I wanted to buy a pair, but I didn't i should have i don't know where it is now it was this guy who made gla glasses out of denim it was cool they were like 200 bucks a pair but i should have gotten it because it was cool as fuck come on it was cool as fuck
glasses at up to 70% off retail prices starting at only $39. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, right? But no, it gets it gets better. It gets crazier. This holiday season, GlassesUSA.com has so many exclusive offers that you can't find anywhere else, and I'm showing you the box. Okay, plus, if you have FSA slash HSA dollars that you've been saving up all year, use them ASAP because basically you'll get the glasses for free. That is tax stuff. I pay my taxes wow. just like everyone else. Shopping online can be fun, but it can also be extremely overwhelming. Nah, man, when you pay your taxes online, when, you, when you're your creator and you pay taxes, it's so annoying because you have to pay him up like an burst to like four like a three month burst so annoying i gotta pay like uh, my taxes again soon in january 15th i think it is i usually just fucking throw 10 grand at them it's fucking crazy though but then you get a nice amount back sometimes depending you know that's how i always learned then you get like a lot lots of money back and i'm married so it makes it even better the best part of being in a marriage is making that tax money baby and stressful with so many options, you know? Ooh, ah. That's why I love shopping for my frames with Glasses USA. They offered some amazing tools to help me find my perfect pair, and I'm sure they'll help you out too. One of those tools was the virtual try-on function. I actually I got my, my perfect pair. It's my wife's butt. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> they call it a peach. I guess that's what you're supposed to call it, but I don't care. It's to find my frames and it was super helpful. Shopping online at glassesusa.com is a risk-free shopping experience. They offer free shipping and returns and a 100% money-back guarantee within the first, 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 first 14 days. Click the links in the description or the one that I'm showing on screen right now to access these amazing offers. Hopefully we watch the entire advertisement. Well, I hope you enjoyed that part. The scarier issue on TikTok comes into play when a creator decides that they want to make creation a career. Content creation is harder than your nine to five. That, I think that guy was kidding, by the way. I fell for it, too, so I can't be, I can't uh, cringe too hard, but I think that guy was fucking around with people when he said that, that the content creation was harder than your 9 to 5. <laughs> As I talked about before, numbers on TikTok can be very deceiving, and for the uninformed creator, hitting a million or even 100,000 followers can vastly change the way you view yourself as even an individual. Back in late 2020, yep. when the creator fund was originally- In a way where it's completely inflated. Like, you're, you're, you're gonna be like, oh my god, I'm a creator? It's crazy. I, like, literally, the best- the happiest I've been is when I don't have to care about virality is, is cringe, by the way. You can you can do very well without being viral. Originally announced, a lot of creators, including myself, were super excited. It sounded like an opportunity to really take it to the next level. And believe it or not, this was the case for about two months. When the creator fund was announced, TikTok claimed that they would be starting with a fund of $200 million and that in the next three years, they expected it to increase to $1 billion. And at the time, I was like, okay, okay, let's get that money. In my first month on the creator It fund, wasn't that bad originally, especially since it was new. Like, I, you would get 50 bucks a million views. Um, and you could do well for yourself. I think the best I've ever done in a day is like nine hundred dollars in in a day on on TikTok. It was fucking awesome. But then there were more more creators, and they did not increase the uh, they they implement the more and more creators got access to the fund, which is good. And they were making more and more money, which is good, like the the, the app. But they did not increase that fucking fund, dude. It's so terrible. It's fucking nuts, bro. It's nuts. I want to say I garnered around 35 million views, but this was when I was at the height of my career, so I was getting about a couple million views a day. And in full transparency, I made $1,438.99. Now understand, that's a really good chunk of money, but not for 30 million views. Just for reference, that same amount of views over on YouTube would get you tens of thousands of dollars. And well, just keep in mind, like, it's not, the views are completely irrelevant. Like, it, it's, it's the uh, amount of time that they're engaging with it, right? So like, oh, if you get, I would do so much better on YouTube with this many views. Views, it's it's about like, uh, it's more about how long somebody watches rather than like, you know, how many views you get. That being said, it, to me, what's most important is the proportionality of like how much money is being made versus like how much are you paying your creators. Again, YouTube, I think does 55% on videos and then they do, um, well, they're going to start doing 45% on shorts, right? So I can respect that. That makes sense to me. TikTok just has a static fund that equals out to, I think, either 6 or 10%. Somebody did the math. I don't remember the specifics. Um, it's just not good enough at all, you know? Please don't get me wrong, $1,500 is a great amount of money, and I am very grateful that I was even compensated at all for my work. But the amount of money the creators are able to make has quickly decreased over time with no overt explanation from TikTok. It's gone from creators making barely enough to get by to... Poverty. In fact, since the announcement and launch of the Creator Fund, we still have yet to hear literally anything about its growth. It's because they're losing money. If you want to learn more about that, I would highly suggest checking out Hank Green's video that he made a couple months ago. It is very informative, very good. So what happens when TikTok is your entire- It was a good video, I reacted to it. <laughs> oh, who would have thought? Livelihood, and then all of a sudden you start making no money? <laughs> you beg. Everybody tired of screen, let me get them life. Yeah, everybody tired of screen. Yeah, and you know what's crazy though? It, like the, even the lives. They uh, I watched like a BBC segment yesterday. They did it. It's about you get they make uh, I think people TikTok takes like about roughly seventy percent 
of of the money that you make on your fucking live. Could you imagine seventy percent? I don't get it. There's I, how is how? Like again, not to jerk off YouTube, you know, because you never know in the future they might start fucking people. But you get like thir- you get like seventy percent of what you make from memberships and uh like lives and shit. And it's like how the fuck? You know what I mean? Mean like the meanwhile, you know, people are getting fucked on YouTube on uh, TikTok and the infrastructure isn't nearly as big, you know? It's crazy. Hey, let me get hey, yo everybody let's boom boom the likes right now now this is a newer activity that boom i discovered on tiktok right but now. every time i see it i have to close the app because it makes me so sad and i mean you're probably wondering how the fuck do you pull that off well if there's anything we know about the internet it's that people will find a way now i've seen this done in a couple ways so far and they're both equally shitty but the first one is through manipulation i'd like to turn your attention to this guy the major nerd i actually used to follow him on tiktok for a while super nice guy so i don't mean any hate by doing this segment on him i think that while i have nothing against him <laughs> he is a perfect example of an uninformed creator who may not be aware of his actions so i just want to help him out a bit i stay awake at night wondering my content creator with over 1.6 oh if you wanted to help him out man i would recommend him dming him instead of making a video about the guy <laughs> Too many followers can't get verified i put in the work just like everyone else and have gone viral multiple times i struggle to have content creation pay the bills i struggle to get consistent views i can't help but think that i'm doing something wrong if only the way to get verified is to make viral music or make the news then what hope do i have you'll probably notice that everything the only real thing that like verification does for you which is actually a big deal is it makes it harder it makes them less likely to take down a video that you put up which is nice um but that's it there's nothing super profound about it uh, it, 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 even then, you can get videos taken down. They're just like less likely to the call to action. The good old days when I was verified, am I right? He said in that TikTok is something that I have already mentioned in this video. So not only am I right, but I also feel really good. Notice how he says, I can't help but feel like I'm doing something wrong. Hey, you cheated on me. What the fuck? No, no, baby. Listen, I'm, I'm not feeling like myself. I just, I'm not feeling good. I, 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 just, I can't help but feel like I'm doing something wrong. Um, yep. Whether it's conscious or not, this is a clear manipulation tactic. The only reason I would do this in front of an audience what? is if I was completely desperate or if I had the cold steel barrel of a gun jammed halfway up my nostril. But it gets why is it, why is it manipulation though? I don't understand. Like maybe he just doesn't understand what's happening. It's frustrating. I understand the they're having a bad relationship um i understand having a bad relationship with content i think a lot of creators have a really bad relationship with their content regardless of the platform um and this is a huge issue that i've noticed i've gone as far to see people so upset about their views for instance that they won't stream they just refuse to stream they're so focused on like the proportionality of view uh, to to uh, to the size of their platform that they're like, I don't even want to stream because I'm too embarrassed to get fewer views than a stream. I've gotten people who've made fun of like me for um, like, oh, this guy's not getting a lot of views anymore. This guy's not doing this, it's doing that. Uh, and they're like, see, he fell off. He did this. And meanwhile, these are people who are either not established content creators that have never really done well, or people who will only stream, you know, once or twice a week because they feel like they, they, they're too, they're too afraid to get lesser views doing content that they might enjoy more. Meanwhile, in my, my right now in my reestablishment, this I'm doing the right now with my, with my changing, uh, of my content. Oh, fuck. This is not going to be good. I'm doing worse than I've done in let's say two years financially and that's fifteen hundred dollars a week so like my low point when people try to make fun is a little better than your high point and it's just like you know you got they have such a bad relationship with content there it's like a mental fucking thing they rather make less money and have less fun and uh then get less views you know it's 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 an insane it's obsessive people don't have good relationships with their content they start to get like afraid they don't really know what they want to do um it's crazy man and that's part of it and you get you go it makes you go fucking insane and you know like <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 you got to try to break the spell. That's all I got to say. This, you got to break the spell. It's more intense. What if I was able to pay for a brand new car using nothing but TikTok roses? After we moved here, my car was in an accident, and now getting oh. around to do anything has been next to impossible. Now it's getting a little manipulation y. Okay. My whole family, my son really, has missed out on his whole summer because of a stupid accident, and I feel responsible. So I set a goal of saving every gift that's sent during my live streams until we hit 12 million roses. There's a lot to unpack in this one, but I think at this point we all kind of see it and can be in agreement that this is a little uncomfortable. By using yeah. the information about your son, you essentially begin to beg on behalf of your entire family. And while I, I feel know. for that, I don't think that it is by any means appropriate for a public platform. Do you know how many kids have access to their parents' credit cards? Dude, one of those kids might mess up and send you enough money to buy two cars. Well, well, I mean, that's not the angle I would go. The angle I would go is just kind of embarrassing. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's I don't know. To me, it's like begging for money is... 
you know, that's pathetic you know, in general, unless you really need it. Like, if you're, like, really fucked, like, I get, like, I watched a video about Syrian refugees. I get why they're begging, you know what I mean? But, you know, you're not a Syrian refugee. You could probably just, you know, work. But, you know, maybe that's just me. One dollar is equal to 65 coins, then to get 12 million gifts would equal $62,769. Wow. What the now, clearly the guy is struggling, and like I said, I feel for him, but my tip is that maybe you would save a little more money if you didn't spend it all on a room full of collectibles. I mean, that shit's pretty <laughs> right? Like, couldn't you just sell that Ooh. entire room of stuff and get a car? But who knows, maybe like it makes him guy. feel successful. And I get it, you know, I found Ronald out on the side of the street, and you know, ever since I got him, I feel unstoppable. What? Dude, maybe if you weren't a fucking painting, you could get out here and do something about it. But in terms of struggle, the major nerd is nothing in comparison to what I am about to show you. Well, like I was saying before, I understand why these people beg. I wouldn't criticize them for their begging, bro. Like they're 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 struggling, brother. They're struggling, you know. Like I would definitely like these are people. This isn't a scam on TikTok. So it's a scam on TikTok. Children used for aggressive begging. These people, these are Syrian refugees. Like yeah, they're using their kids to beg, of course. And you know what they're getting? They're getting like eighteen percent. Of the money that they get, TikTok takes about seventy, and then like you know the different the people that like let them basically rent the phones, and there's a lot of shit going on. There's people on there missing like arms and legs. I I understand why they're doing their shit, man. They're just trying to fucking live. These are these are people that are in like camps that have no other financial option. You know they're fucked. I get that. I understand them begging. If you laughed at that, I'm gonna hunt you down, I swear to God. What the major nerd was doing, I would call discreet begging. But this, uh, this is just straight up begging. I'm not so sure that this type of begging needs further explanation because if you look at it from all angles, it's very plain to see that this is super fucked up. But I think it's appropriate to say that this is TikTok's rock bottom. I mean, at this point, they are literally promoting despair. These small examples of creators are just a few of millions who are experiencing the same struggle and desperation every day. By promising fame and fortune to all creators who meet the requirements for TikTok monetization, TikTok creates a false sense of security for so many people who are just- well, I don't think that they're promising fame- Dude, this my button's just not working. It's making me really mad. They're not promising fame and they're not promising fame and fortune. Um, it's just that they don't pay a good amount of their fucking fund. That's all that I think it is, more than anything else trying to get by. Seeing stuff like this in so many places on the platform makes using it highly unenjoyable, not just for the creator, but for the viewer as well. So where do you go from here? These days, as the ability to gain quick success as a creator has diminished, TikTok has become more of a platform for the people. And if you think that's a good thing, you're very wrong. In the history of its existence, TikTok has gone from being a platform of fun escapism to a cesspool of casual bullying. I was going to take this section to talk about- Bro, it's always been that way. Are you kidding me? It's probably worse back in the day. People used to get fucking so bullied back in 2020. <laughs> it's so fucked up. My fucking W butt does not work. It's making me mad. About a lot of the bullying on the app and the stuff that I don't like to see, but I thought it would be good to just briefly focus on one person who I think we all know pretty well. In terms of bullying, one name comes to mind, and that is Joshua, World of T-shirts. If you're unfamiliar with yeah, this Joshua gets well, Joshua does get bullied quite a bit, but all bro, it's so fucked up, man. I I wish this kid was he does some wild ass shit for money and views, man. Like that's the fucked up part. This dude like licked like a fucking subway floor. I'm surprised he's not dead. No, I'm not even joking. It's fucking crazy what this dude does. He's a young man with autism, you know what I mean? And he, he's, I don't think his home life's that great. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, it's fucked. It's fucked, man. It's just unfortunate. Nothing else to really say. His creator, he is a young autistic man who just seems to have a general joy for life. Joshua was once loved for his uh, King of New York brand. Yeah! run this city now oh, and now through a broken idea of now. success mainly promoted by his followers he has evolved to day drinking and dancing in the streets of harlem at 6 a.m kind of going hard though not gonna lie while there are people who are actually concerned for his health and well-being a majority yeah, of the comments yeah. are just encouraged like uh, curly daddy 101 baby they're friends but like there's only so much you can do you know like how how do you help somebody like that it's so fucked you know it's just so f where the fuck am i going am i going like the wrong way oh i am i'm a stinky goober bitch okay never him. Guys, the internet is literally banded together to ruin the life of a helpless young man. Are, are we hearing this? I guess not. LOL. But guys, the bullying can be found in so many forms. It's exhausting, it's tiring, and I don't like, like it. it. I know this video is mainly about creation, but I thought that that would be a very important quick thing to touch on, maybe. But here's something cool. TikTok's influence on other social media is complete and utter bullshit, but it certainly lights a fire under TikTok's ass. Well, yes, we hate how every social media app is using the For You page style setup. It's showing TikTok that there are social media platforms that have TikTok's basic setup and much, much more. In fact, all of these companies are willing to steal the shitty format but. while simultaneously Spontaneously paying their creators more. So honestly, TikTok, True. you smell like shit. I agree. I agree. Hi, hello. Oh, I have a weird like popping in my ear. I can hear myself. I was the only problem with things like so Snapchat, real like in Snapchat, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts right now 
what their plan, what their monetization plan is, is that if you get enough views, they'll give you money. But there's no actual like uh, established. Oh, that's not where I want to go. Fuck. There's no established creator fund. And I, I think that that's a bit problematic as well because it's almost it's arguably worse. I mean, more like less people will get more money, which is good. But then at the end, that you know, also it's not like a I don't know, it's not really proportionate. You know, they're able to. It just makes it kind of like I don't know. They're able to pay other creators more, but not everybody gets paid. You know what they may necessarily deserve. Um, however, they're transitioning that on YouTube at least, like I was saying before, to like a static forty five percent, which is cool. I think that that's pretty cool. I wasn't really sure about making this last part of the video because I wasn't sure if I had enough to say. But I thought I would kind of use this ending part to point out the fact that there is so much to say and that there is so much more that I wanted to cover. As a creator, at any time, I feel like it's super important to know what the next move is for you. Whether it's going to be like your next big video or your next big project, I feel like a lot of people get so comfortable in how easy it is to use TikTok. I mean, it took me a year and a half to figure out that I wasn't making any money on TikTok. And that was a year and a half wasted that I could have already been doing on YouTube. What the fuck? Audience to me is just such an interesting concept that I feel like I'm never going to fully understand. But it's very clear that it just kind of works in different ways you know i feel like being on youtube now that for the first time i actually have an audience that wants to see the work that i'm putting in you know there's that whole situation with that brody wellmaker guy on tiktok who made that movie with some of his buddies and they got pissed because only 14 people went to see it or something it's like yeah man that's it that's on you that's how it works i think it's important to not only recognize audience but also respect audience at the same time you know everyone always talks about how don't, don't respect your audience guys they don't they don't deserve it okay that's <laughs> i just fucked it up uh Oh, creators don't owe you anything. Parasocial this, parasocial that. But it's like, yeah, the audience doesn't owe us anything either. It's just like Glasses USA, you know? They gave me the glasses because they wanted me to promote their product. If they didn't want me, I wouldn't have heard shit from them. So, you know, that next step, though. It's that next step. What is next? And I beg every person- They better give you more than just fucking glasses, man. Hopefully some money, too. Jesus Christ. My, head, my head's too fat to order glasses online. That's the fucking problem. I'm not even kidding. I have a big fat head. I feel bad for my wife when she, when she finally, you know, gives birth to our fucking child. That thing's going to tear her the fuck apart. You know, all honesty, like I, I almost killed my mother coming out of her vagina. I'm not even really kidding that much. My head was wider than my shoulders. Just so you guys know, that's not normal. And uh, I came out of my mother's vagina and the, the, the nurses were like, get up. You have to get up. You have to start moving, you know, because at some point you do. But the doctor came in and said, what do you like? I'm surprised that he didn't break your pelvis coming out of you. That's how fucked it was, you know? That's how fucking crazy that was. Um, that's life, brother. Person who is a creator on TikTok or who wants to be a creator in general that's watching this video, I really yeah, just Jesus, beg yeah. you to figure out that next step. Because TikTok has shown us they're not coming around for creators anytime soon. In fact, you're they're just making coming. it more confusing and more difficult to make money. But guys, at the end of the day, you know, I'm super grateful. And it did all start with TikTok. You know, I made that very clear. I'm not sure if this was so much a statement on TikTok, the app itself, but rather the corporation behind it. And I think it worked out well. I was able to say a lot of stuff that I've been meaning to get off my chest for a while. Now, I'm not saying to give up on your dreams of being a content creator, or a YouTuber, or whatever. You know, it, it could happen for anyone. But with so many people wanting to be, content creators and youtubers and stuff these days it's the world's gonna start to look pretty interesting soon can't necessarily say i'm excited yeah i mean like listen if you look at if you look at tiktok creation as like a supplemental thing and you have a backup plan and shit man like it's uh you know it's cool you're gonna see a lot more content creators that are like part-time people maybe they'll make a little bit of money here and there and someone inconsistently and they'll be able to pick pull and stuff and or maybe they'll be short lived. You know, maybe maybe this is it for Papa Gut. Maybe twenty twenty three is is the year of the downfall. But also maybe twenty twenty three is the year of the upfall. Huh? You know? We'll see. I'm definitely nervous, uh, and I hope that I survive. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and you consider commenting and liking and subscribing to see more of good old analytical Andy. He is so sweet and precious to you. Thanks again to Glasses USA for sponsoring this video. I really love the glasses, and I only work with companies that I actually like. So thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Well, that is all I have for this video. Uh, but until next time, I'm going to make a really dramatic... Uh-oh. You got you to gotta kind of... <sighs> there we go. All right. I actually like that. I kind of like this guy. I was surprised. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face, but just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face.